What was that? Lots of bird visitors today. Good morning. I hope that you are chipper as uh, all the guests around us are as well. There we go. We're going to start today with Lord Jesus Christ, Be Present Now, just from the beginning of service section of the hymnal, number 902, and um, one we haven't done before. use the phrase we shall see you face to face oh because it feels like we've been singing it quite a bit every day hmm. not every day most days <sighs> first kings chapter 20 verse 26 yes in the spring Ben-Hadad mustered the Syrians and went up to Aphek to fight against Israel. And the people of Israel were mustered and were provisioned and went against them. The people of Israel encamped before them like two little flocks of goats. But the Syrians filled the country. And a man of God came near and said to the king of Israel, Thus says the Lord, Because the Syrians have said the Lord is a God of the hills, but he is not a God of the valleys, Therefore, I will give all this great multitude into your hand, and you shall know that I am the Lord. And they encamped, encamped opposite one another seven days. Then on the seventh day, the battle was joined, and the people of Israel struck down of the Syrians 100,000 foot soldiers in one day. And the rest fled into the city of Aphek, and the wall fell upon 27,000 men who were left. Ben-Hadad also fled and entered an inner chamber in the city. And his servants said to him, Behold now, we have heard that the kings of the house of Israel are merciful kings. Let us put sackcloth around our waists and ropes on our heads and go out to the king of Israel. Perhaps he will spare your life. So they tied sackcloth around their waists and put ropes on their heads and went to the king of Israel and said, Your servant Ben-Hadad says, Please let me live. And he said, Does he still live? He is my brother. Now the men were watching for a sign, and they quickly took it up from him and said, Yes, your, your brother Ben-Hadad. <laughs> then he said, Go and bring him. Then Ben-Hadad came out to him, and he caused him to come up into the chariot. And Ben-Hadad said to him, The cities that my father took from your father I will restore, and you may establish bazaars for yourself 
in Damascus, as my father did in Samaria. And Ahab said, I will let you go on these terms. So he made a covenant with him and let him go. Oh, man. <laughs> I can't wait to hear your exposition on this. <laughs> so it's a rerun. It's Saul all over again. Remember when when God sent Saul, you know, go to this place, fight these people, and and uh, wipe wipe them out. You, you got to kill this king because they were opposed to God. And Saul wins in the battle, defeats them, and then plunders all this stuff that God said, "Don't take anything for yourself. Destroy it all." And and the king, he brings the king, he hauls the king back with him, and Samuel meets Saul and says. What's this sound I hear of the, of the bleeding of flocks and herds? And, oh, well, uh, I was bringing it back as an offering to the Lord. Is that what God told you to do? Because you think God favors you, you think you can do whatever you want. If, if you are successful and therefore you think, it's because God likes me and I'm special, <clears throat> then that... Then that excuses whatever you want to do. But maybe that's not why you were successful. Was Ahab successful because God loves Ahab? God thinks Ahab's a great guy and he's running the kingdom really well? No. Ahab was unfaithful himself, and but but Ben Hadad was mocking God. Ben Hadad was following his advisors to say, Oh, he's just a god of the hills, but we're gonna beat him on the plain. And God says Oh, you think I'm only this little bitty God then? Uh, I'm going to show you. And he allows Ahab to be the instrument of his of his uh, glorification, to say God is greater than that. The Israelite God is the true God, who's God of the whole world, right? Of all creation. That's what Ahab could have said. That's what Ahab could have proved. Instead, uh, he... He goes to God's enemy and says, oh, my brother. And, and the, the people of Syria, the advisors to Ben-Hadad, they say, oh, these people believe in this like repentance thing. If you just do this, all you have to do is just put on some sackcloth, you know, and wear your worst clothes and, and, uh, and you're good. Oh, sometimes I meet Christians who think that. Oh well, I'll just repent, and then I, um, I got a you know a uh, an excuse card, right? That's not what that means. That's that's not how that works. That's that's not what that's about. <sighs> no, uh, a real relationship, a, a real. Uh, and I don't want to say I, I just got tired of the word relationship because it just sounds like I like you, right? A relationship with God, a true relationship with God, recognizes who's God and who's not, and who God really is. So, so people who are trying to manipulate God, however they're trying to do it, by by thinking, "Oh, God's on my side," or if I just do this, God has to do that. If I just if I just put on this sackcloth or whatever, then I can get what I want. They always get surprised when God is not what they thought. When God is not just another person that they can manipulate, like they manipulate their spouse or their or their followers or the or you know whatever. Uh, we get used to the idea that uh, with a president or a king. If we support their campaign, if we make donations, we you know we can get a position appointed to us or whatever that kind of a thing. That's not how you how you follow the true God, because He's not just a guy; He is God, and that means we owe Him all things. And acknowledging who God is is the most important. Uh, definition of what it means to have a true relationship with God. Recognizing who God is. Not only 
now uh, now we move into the New Testament not only understanding that God is great and the source of all our life and being but that God is loving and that when we turn to him in repentance it's not because we did a certain thing it's because of the character of God and therefore Turning to God in repentance means truly placing our lives into his hands, that whatever he desires is best. If that's what, what Ben Hadad was doing, then a different deal. If he had if he had been saying as get this, as Nebuchadnezzar did, much later, if Ben Hadad had been saying, Wow, now I know that the God of Israel is the only true God, the outcome of this would have been very different. Instead, everybody's just making deals. They're just they're just cutting deals with each other. And Ben Hadid says, "Well, I'll give you these cities back." Oh, thank you so much. Our cities, you gave them back to us. And he says, "And you can have rights to have a shopping mall in my in my town." Oh, wonderful! <laughs> and for this, you know, he gets off scot free for attacking the people of God. Oh my! Yes. Not to mention all the lives that were lost. Right. All these people who were lost because, uh, and not only Israelites, but Syrians, because of their greed for, one, greed for what one another has and their maneuvering. And none of it, none of it to serve the Lord. None of it for what God would consider real reasons. So, uh, translating this to today is too easy. Um, I don't like to, I don't want to get into politics. I'm like a pick any examples but in your own life um, are when are you seeking what it is that God desires and when are you playing the game to manipulate God or somebody else to get what you desire uh, when we are seeking what God desires he gives he he works that plan out so that we see his will and it may not be what you would have thought ideal, but it's going to be it's going to be good. Uh, but when we're seeking what we desire, or to manipulate God or others, um, uh, when we are making God small, then it never ends well. It never ends well. Let's pray, Heavenly Father. We have a lot of big decisions in our lives coming up. All of us do. Um, there are changes in the world, uh, changes in the church, changes in our lives. Father, give us eyes to see you, your greatness, uh, your goodness, and to desire what you desire. Grant that we may seek your will in all these things and not our own. Then, Lord, unlike Ahab, unlike uh, ben Hadad, we will find that whatever the outcome, it will be guided and blessed by you. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.